God, look at that picture over there. There's the earth coming up. Wow, is that pretty? I've always been intrigued by how people develop and what is hurting their development and what is good for their development. And I think given the, uh, the advent of cognitive neuroscience and develop developmental cognitive neuroscience, we know so much about what is good for kids and what is not good for kids. And my goal is to get a little bit of that knowledge which is out there transferred into the institutions that take care of kids, that is kindergartens and schools. In my view, it amounts to a crime to give iPads or other screen media to children under 10 years old. It is actually a crime because it's not only not good, it is really bad for the cognitive development. If you swipe across a featureless surface with the, ever the same hand motion, your sensory skills and your motor skills, which both feed into any higher level cognitive brain area, the higher level brain areas that we use for thinking. They don't have direct input and output to the real world. It, it go, everything goes through sensory and motor areas. If you don't train up those with complex motions and complex sensory information, how can the more inner areas ever get complex input? The answer is no way. So it's an active dampening down of uh, the cognitive abilities of our kids, giving out iPads in kindergartens and elementary schools. It's a crime. We must not do this. We know that any process that breaks down your brain causes dementia in the long run. There are many brain disorders that cause mental decline, but with any decline, uh, there is a simple truism. The higher you start, the longer it takes you to get down. Which is why the largest protective effect from dementia is not eating blueberries or broccoli or jogging. No, it's the level of education you achieved when you were young, when you were young uh, as a child and an adolescent. But if this is the case, and it's in every textbook on dementia, okay, then everything that interferes a lot with your educational level and digital media are doing so, will cause more dementia in the long run. The more time you spend on the internet, the more likely you are to have elevated blood pressure. That was found, in, found out in school children in the US, together with experiments showing that if the smartphone rings, your blood pressure and your heart rate, rate goes up. That's actually ex experimental work that has shown this, okay? And together with the epidemiological work from school nurses in schools who just took blood pressure and asked, how much time do you spend on the internet per week, okay? Together, you have a pretty strong argument uh, that it's actually, it, it, it doesn't cause high blood pressure in everybody, but it just elevates the risk a tiny bit. But since high blood pressure is the major risk of the number one cause of death, that is strokes and cardiac uh, arrest and cardiac failure, okay? So, so cardiovascular is the number one cause of death. And since smartphones contribute to that, even if they contribute to just, let's say, 1% or 5%, okay, that would be a huge number of premature deaths. Same thing is with uh, dementia, same thing with depression. Did you know that smartphones cause sleeplessness? Sleeplessness is a, a risk factor for diabetes, which again is a risk factor for cardiovascular disorders like heart attacks and strokes. So again, the sleeplessness you get with a smartphone, and that's, that has been shown in sleep labs, not just by questionnaireing, etc. Uh, the, the sleeplessness you get directly causes an increased risk of the number one cause of death that we have in Western, uh, Western countries anyway. So we are talking about a lot of harm produced by smartphones. Did you know that the smartphone has surpassed alcohol as the number one car accident, a traffic accident cause um, by far? In fact, on the German Autobahn, there used to be signs, don't mix drinking and driving. And now it says, tip, tip, dead. So it um, will make sure that you don't use your smartphone while you are on the autobahn. Another big issue is depression. 
if you use your smartphone a lot, well, you are not really social, socially interacting and you feel that, well, the grass is always greener at the other party and uh, the li other lives are always nicer and happier, etc., etc. So smartphones really make you depressed and the effect is so big that, for example, a large British st study showed that women who do a lot of socializing on their smartphones, who spend more than uh, three hours per day when they are 13 have the twice the risk to be depressed when they're 18. That's a large-scale British study. In America, a psychologist has found that uh, the suicide rate in young women has doubled over the past seven years. And suicidal ideation goes hand in hand with the hours of digital media use per day. That has also been shown in ha more than half a million 13 to 18 year olds. So we have to be very cautious of, of this big effect. I'm a psychiatrist by training and I can tell you that depression is, we have a, an epidemic of that globally anyway, in particular when it comes to younger people. And uh, doubling that rate is really something that should be a serious health concern. The smartphone is not only the most widely used uh, digital gadget, it's also the smallest. So it has a screen like this. So it has to be used at close, cl close up, okay? So now we know that eyes that develop by growing to their full size, okay? And they have to because otherwise they are out of focus. I mean, the physics of the eyes is such such that they have a certain focal length and it, they need to be of a certain size. And the eyes of kids when they are born are too small, so the eyes are a bit out of focus. And um, so it would be neat if the eyes would grow just as such that they would be exactly of the size to be in focus. And it turns out, it has been found out not so long ago, that this is exactly what happens. The eyes grow until they are in focus. Now, if you look at close range, that is, the rays don't come in parallel, but they come from here, they focus way or back in your, in your eye. So if you look at close range for a long time every day, you get short-sighted, basically. So your eyes get too long and you need glasses to correct that. that that's known for 140 years. And the first publication uh, was published in 1880 on school myopia, that is school short-sightedness, because if you read a lot from a book, you get short-sightedness just as well. But this is no longer a problem. The average German adolescent reads 15 minutes a day from books. But the average Korean adolescent looks at the smartphone 5.4 hours a day. On top of that, you have tablets and laptops and other things. So if you spend a lot of time, your waking time, looking at close range, you'll become short-sighted. The normal uh, frequency of short-sightedness is 1 to 5 percent of the population. In the below 20-year-old South Koreans, it's over 95 percent. In China, it's way over 80 percent. In Europe, it used to be 5 percent. In youngsters, it's close to 50 percent now. So we have a myopia, short-sightedness, pandemic on a global scale. We do have uh, the myopic pandemic a global disease that is going to cause uh, be a lot of burden because myopia gives you blindness in the long run. And uh, so that we have this pandemic and in my view this is not the only one but it's a major one and this is why I'm talking about the smartphone pandemic. If there's one thing that's clear, the, yo the younger you are, the more you suffer from digital media use which is why the World Health Organization doesn't recommend screen media until the age of two and uh, clearly says less is better until the age of five where you should use them at least or at, at the most for a half an hour or an hour and even later than that we have clear indications that the more uh, school children use screen media uh, the less well their cognitive abilities develop. Uh, we have large-scale studies by now showing this really clearly and we should be concerned. I think we should not let uh, the big digital industry um, uh, wreak havoc to the health and the education of the next generation, which it, it would be irresponsible to do so, but we are actually right now doing it. What we are doing 
is basically a lot of activities that cause addiction. Because human beings are information junkies. They want to, they want to know about other human beings. So the so-called social media, which are not social, but actually anti-social in the long run, but they give you the illusion of knowing about other people and you get addicted to this. It, in fact, Facebook was programmed to cause addiction, as indicated by the programmers of Facebook. For, smartphones cause addiction and uh, they, in, in South Korea, we have about 30% of smartphone addiction in uh, people under 19. So now, as we know that digital screen media interfere with cognitive development and they cause addiction, what do you think what we should do? Should we say, oh well, you use them a little less than we do now? No, I think we here we have a piece of technology that causes serious problems. First, addiction. Second, developmental dysfunctioning. What do we do? Well, in Germany they say we have to get to come to grips with that by doing media education. I think that's wrong and I'll tell you why. Um, do we do alcohol competency training in kindergarten and elementary school in Germany even though we use a lot of beer and wine in Germany? No, we don't. Because we know that alcohol is addictive and alcohol impairs brain development. Smartphones are doing just the same. So we must not do any training of smartphone use in younger kids. How long does the harm of alcohol continue to be noticeable in human beings? Well, across your lifespan. I'm not joking when I say smartphones are even more risky as regards your brain development and your health, general health, and your education, which is why we should be very careful about not using them too much. We got rid of TV when the kids were smaller, and now I have my, my youngest is 10 years, and of course she has no screen medium whatsoever, and, uh, and she's doing wonderfully. And she's not unhappy, and she's also not alone. It's, it's often claimed, well, everybody has this, so we have to have it. Well, you know, in Germany, this is a very bad argument. Let's do it because everybody goes with it. Uh, we had this in history and it didn't work well. So I think we sh one should be very clear with the, with the kids, say, you know what, I know better than you know that this is not good for you, so even though you want it, I won't give it to you, and you will be grateful for that when you get a bit older. Just as like you are grateful now that I didn't, didn't give you candy when you were three all the time you wanted it, because otherwise you would be fat and your teeth would be rotten. Now you have wonderful teeth and you're not fat because I took care of you. Let me take care of you for the next couple of years just as well. And let me be very clear. Some people say, oh, well, you can't be that strict, Professor Spitzer. This is outlandish to say something like this. But you know what? We have come to grips with a lot of technology. And uh, sometimes the solution was radical. We didn't ban cars because they sometimes can be uh, a death sentence to people, but we regulated cars highly, so you cannot use one in Germany until you are 18. And why is that? Because we think you have to be morally responsible for driving a car. And I tell you something, you need more morals to use the smartphone responsibly, because it's the biggest crime scene on earth and the biggest red light district on earth. And you don't want to give this out to kids or adolescents just so and let them go loose with this. Uh, it's worse than cars. And once we have 18 with cars, why not having 18 with smartphones? So when I say you must not give out a smartphone to your kid or adolescent, I'm really serious about that because you don't know how much harm you are doing. and You should, otherwise you'll act irresponsibly. We actually had kids stop using their smartphone for a while. And then we not just uh, gave out questionnaires, but we measured their behavior with the little fitness trackers that are cheap. And we, I bought a couple of hundred, gave them out. And so we have hard data, what happens if you ban smartphones from kids, from kids' lives. And it's actually wonderful what happens. They sleep more, they are more attentive, and uh, they have about a thousand steps per day more that they take, so they're more active. Given that I have written four books on detrimental effect of screens, uh, and given that we know more, not just what is not good, but what is good, um, I want to work more on a positive aspect. So what is the good thing that you can do to kids? Music, physical education, doing things with your hands, and uh, playing theater. 
And it used to be that, oh well, yes, we know that this is good, but this is old fashioned, so so saying. Um, no, we now have good science to support this, but it's somewhere out there and it hasn't been brought together together with the packaging that gives you the reasons why it is the case, okay? So given that we have this knowledge, it is, I, I think, um, now it's the time to bring it together and, and write about, well, what can we do, not just what do we need to avoid when it comes to kids and their well-being.